Hi, Phil here for Hike Slam. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about the challenge. On the Appalachian Trail, there are shelter logs at most of the shelters and hostels throughout the entire 2200 mile trail. In these notebooks, hikers write jokes, notes to other hikers, gossip, or important information about weather and trail conditions that might lie ahead. I remember writing something in the Matt's Creek shelter log in Virginia. In it, I wrote, we choose to through hike the trail and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Signed, Smooth F. Kennedy. My trail name was Smooth, and this was obviously a refried version of JFK's famous line about sending a man to the moon and returning him safely to the earth. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. I thought my version was kind of funny, but I was also trying to communicate something that was important to me. It was a feeling that propelled me forward on the hardest days on the trail. It was something that echoed in my mind every day. What I was trying to communicate through that little joke that I left in the shelter log was that the challenge is the juice. That's the addictive part of hiking. It'll be that subtle voice in the back of your head every day that'll keep telling you to get back out into the wilderness to find the next opportunity when you can really test yourself. In quote, real life, or life away from the trail, we go about our days pretending to be just like everyone else. Driving cars, sending emails, wearing dress shoes, regurgitating corporate bullshit so we can keep our jobs just to pay the rent. In a way, we're wearing a mask that makes us seem normal. But in reality, we'd rather be away from all that civilization. We'd rather be in a place where we really belong, out in the woods somewhere. Sometimes we only really feel at home in a place where we're just trying to eat enough or drink enough so we can survive for one more day to find out what's over top of that next mountain. Then to go to sleep for a bit in a tent, a shelter, or under a tarp and do it all over again the next day. And when we're in civilization and not on a hiking adventure, often we'll find ourselves daydreaming about the next time we can find ourselves at the mercy of the weather, the terrain, and our own thoughts. People look at you like you're crazy when you tell them that you ate ramen noodles, slept on the hard ground, and hiked 15 miles over mountains for five months straight, and that was the best time of your whole life. You know your brain is truly broken when you think of all the times you were out hiking with blisters, aching knees, and facing hailstorms, mud, freezing wind, scorching sun, jagged rocks, and have fond memories associated with all of them. The rewards for facing the challenge are amazing. The things that you took for granted as a regular citizen will seem like miracles when you stop by a town after a long time in the wilderness. The amount of gratitude you'll feel for these small comforts and the memories that will be created while you're enjoying them and the memories that you'll create during your entire hike will blow your mind. There could be a situation where you feel hungrier than you ever have for your whole life for four straight days in a row. Then all of a sudden you'll have the best meal you ever ate. Four Elio's pizzas that you heated up in a sketchy convenience store somewhere in the Tennessee mountains. Or maybe you'll be hiking through freezing rain and mud for five days straight, and then you'll take the best shower of your entire life in a free hostel in the basement of an old church in Waynesboro, Virginia. You could encounter a section of the trail where the midsummer heat is making you sweat like a pig every night for a week straight. You toss and turn in your sweaty sleeping bag just trying to rest for one or two hours a night. Then you sleep better than you ever have before on a stained, musty carpet in a comically shitty motel room that you're sharing with three other hikers in Duncannon, Pennsylvania. These intense feelings and memories of your adventure will stay with you for the rest of your life. But that's not all. You'll also have every day after your adventure where you can look forward to the next one. When you're on your hike and you stop by town for a night, Chances are you'll wake up the next morning feeling rested. You'll put on clean clothes for the first time in a week and eat a massive breakfast. All will seem right with the world. You'll probably be tempted to stay another night, and you might actually do it sometimes. Take a full zero day. But as you relax and eat huge meals, watch TV, and remain clean, the challenge of the trail will be calling you back. In reality, you don't have to go back to the trail at all. You could choose to just be one of those weirdos who hangs around the hostel for weeks on end. There's always that guy you meet who's hanging around, watching a bunch of VHS tapes, eating Hot Pockets, and he's either been there for four days or for a thousand years. But in trail time, it might as well be the same thing. My advice is, don't be one of those strange people. Of course you'll want to eat some food, take a shower, do some laundry, pick up a mail drop, but after a night or two in town, it's time to get back to the woods where you really belong. Being in civilization is nice and comforting and ultimately a little boring. We choose to go on these adventures and long hikes because they are hard. If they were easy, everyone would do it. 
but we don't want them to be easy. We want the challenge. Don't forget to slam that subscribe button.